Hello my darlings, it's Zui here, and today we're going to read another Bakugo story. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it. But before we go right into it, I would like to remind you to watch the video until the end, like or dislike, and comment something down below. If you don't know what to comment down below, why don't you tell me your favorite Boku no Hero character? Uh, the reason why you need to do this, why this is very, very important, is because this increases my standing in the YouTube algorithm. And when my standing in the YouTube algorithm is increased, not only will I make more money, but also more people will see my videos. So if you really like my videos and you want more people to see these videos, this is the easiest way you can do it. Another way you can do it is sharing the video. This means posting the link anywhere, maybe a Discord, maybe on Twitter, and uh, I even allow you to take certain parts of the video, like a 10 second clip, and upload it on TikTok, and all I really want you to do in return is please link to my video and tell people to, you know, watch me. I would greatly appreciate that. I would also greatly appreciate any fan art you want to send my way. I have a Discord, you can post it right there. And uh, yeah, just add me and so I can immediately react to it. And I don't care what is in that fan art. Like, as long as it is fan art. So, yes, I'm one of the few YouTubers who are okay with Rule 34. So, get creative. Well, let's get right into the story then. Villain attacks, hero patrols, physical training exercises. All of this made it difficult to remember that despite everything, you were still going to school. And school was becoming more and more difficult to handle. In fact, this had led to the creation of cram sessions for the students, who were hired by hero agencies. You yourself were hired by the Fat Gum Agency. Well, Fatgum was a darling to be around. Working at his agency was much more time-consuming than you initially realized. So you had to partake in every cram session possible. With a zombie-like groan, you collected your material after the bell rung, marking the end of your school day. But the time to learn sadly wasn't over yet. With slumped shoulders, you slowly marched over to the library. Today, your cramped session would be accompanied by Bakugo. Something you had tried to avoid. After all, the explosive blonde failed his provisional hero license exam. And since then, he has been boiling. Especially after hearing how easy it was for Deco to get hired. For an entire week, he spoke of nothing but that. So you were on edge when entering the library of UA. The library itself was quite big, filled with books on three separate levels. Mineta theorized that the entire knowledge of mankind was summarized in these novels of wisdom. Bakugo was already waiting for you, his head hovering over your philosophy schoolbook. Oh damn time, he barked in your direction. If a few days ago someone would have told you that you would have a cram session in philosophy with Bakugo, you would have laughed. You sat down on a chair next to him. So, what are we doing today? You said in a vague attempt at raising the mood. Mina wants us to read and analyze the stylistic devices of H.P. Lovecraft. You couldn't believe this sentence had just been spoken by Bakugo. He reached into his school bag and pulled out a handwritten note. Not sure how far you are with your shit, so here's a cheat sheet. What was happening? You gave him a dumbfounded look. What? He growled and you giggled. <laughs> I didn't expect the high and mighty Bakugo to be so... professional. Katsuki gave you a look of disgust. I can leave. In fact, if you piss me off by being too slow, I will. That sounded more like him. The next ten minutes you two spent sprawling out various books, accompanied by your phones, comparing other interpretations of Lovecraft's work and your own. 
While Bakugo wasn't a patient teacher, he was surprisingly good at conveying his opinions and thoughts. And so the evening went on. It was roughly a few hours in when Bakugo suddenly groaned. <sighs> if I read one more line of this melodramatic garbage, I'm going to throw up. You flinched upon hearing that. You were so engrossed in your work you had completely forgotten that he was even there. Uh, you needed to think. Oh, I know. Let's take a break. You suggested. Katsuki's eyes narrowed. Break? You nodded excitedly. There is this Mexican place next to UA that recently opened. We could go in there. Bakugo scratched his shoulder and thought. Ah. You bit your lower lip in disappointment. Why? Mexican food makes me shit water. As always, he used just the right words to sound like an absolute dork. Okay. He answered with discomfort. What's with that face? He barked. Oh, well, uh, what else do you suggest? Why were you even trying at this point? He looked you up and down. Ice cream. You mumbled before blushing. And you raised an eyebrow. Didn't take him for an ice cream guy. Wayne, why was he blushing? Both of you stood up at the same time. Should we leave the stuff here? You asked. But Bakugo was already packing his things. Guess this will be a longer break, you thought, with a shrug. Neither of you said a word as you were leaving UA grounds. Until you reached a train going into the city center. Where are we going to eat ice cream? Once again he blushed. Uh, it's, uh... You'll see. You shrugged and simply accepted it. The entire way to the ice cream shop... You wondered why this entire thing felt so weird to you. But once you saw the cute little parlor, you realized why. Bakugo had escorted you to Madame Dawn's. She was a Russian immigrant who a year ago opened up her shop. A quirk, divine taste, allowed her to create fantastic ice cream creations making Madame Dawn's ice cream parlor the top spot for couples to go on dates to. You glanced over at Bakugo, who was looking in the opposite direction. I just thought we'd try it. You wanted to ask if this was a date, but your inner voice told you that it had to be. No, it was you who blushed. Since it was late, the place was filled to the brim with people. Hearts decorated pretty much every surface in conjunction with traditional Russian decorations like Matroshka dolls. Luckily, a couple seemed to have just finished their meal, so there was one table for you two left. And Bakugo sighed in relief as both of you sat down. With anticipation, you took the menu out of its stand. I'll pay, he said while skipping through his own. With anticipation-filled hearts, the two of you took the menu out of its stand. I'll pay, he said while skipping through the pages. You could be an ass and order the most expensive menu item, which would be a very wonderful-looking ice cream creation in the form of a lasagna. However, before you decided, you just had to know. Just to be 100% sure. Yes, there's a date back ago. He made a noise somewhere between a cough and a hiccup. Oi! You had just made him speechless. You giggled. <laughs> it's a yes or no question. You gave him a smug grin. He deeply exhaled through his teeth. He was about to say something when a waitress dressed like an angel approached. Are you two sweeties ready to order yet? You glance at Bakugo over your menu card. Yes, uh, 
I take the chocolate spaghetti ice with white chocolate sauce. The waitress chuckled. Ah, oh, that's my personal favorite. Good choice. And your little girlfriend? He actually hadn't looked through many items. Your thoughts were mostly set on the lasagna. But after Bakugo didn't protest, hearing the woman call you his girlfriend, you quickly jumped to pages ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I take, um... I take the chocolate chip cookie ice ball. The waitress nodded. Wonderful choice, my dear. You sighed in relief. Whenever a waiter didn't compliment your order, you felt a deep pit open in your stomach, like you'd ordered the wrong item. Then again, you probably would have ordered these cookie bowl regardless. While the two of you waited for your food to arrive, Bakugo spoke up. Yes. Hmm? I, I, I said yes. To your question from a minute ago. You chuckled softly. <laughs> Why? There's so many other girls in our class. He looked down at his feet. Besides, you never really showed me any affection. This is a bit sudden. He sighed. If you don't want to call this a date, it's fine. I just... Bako scratched the back of his head. You're the only one who didn't make fun of me for failing the stupid exam. Oh. He was right. Not only that, you saved my ass twice when the villains attacked us at the USJ. You actually just tested out your quirk in an offensive scenario. Well, yes, you did protect him. That hadn't been your main objective. And then you showed up to the cram session with me. Uh, the rich girl, the pink one, and shitty hair were supposed to come too, but as you know, they were a no-show. And I guess I just... He went quiet. You wanted to see whether or not the developing feelings for me are a crush, or just the beginning of a friendship. He nodded. And you grinned. Judging by your constant blushing, I guess it's a crush, huh? Bakugo bit his lower lip, and you chuckled lightly. I don't have a boyfriend... Bakugo, but also so far I didn't develop any deeper feelings for you. But you paused and took a deep breath. I don't see any issue. We can become a couple. I don't mind it at all. He looked up into your eyes. Wait, so what do you mean? You smiled. I mean that I don't mind going on more dates with you, and should something develop, I also see no issue with us being together. You do lean forward and rested your chin on your hand. Besides, right now you're really cute, and I would love to see more of that. His set turned into a bright tomato red, and he looked away with a little pout, and you chuckled. Just then, the waitress approached again with your order of ice cream.